Um, so we're going to talk about wearable technology, both as a disruptive trend and a source of opportunity, particularly in the workplace. So wearable technology, it's all over the place, right? You got smart watches, you got fitness and activity trackers, Google Glass, smart clothing, smart jewelry, smart dog leash. Anybody here smart diapers? <laughs> they, they have those, and, and actually the application is quite good. You know, monitoring the output of a newborn for very healthy reasons. In fact, all the applications are pretty, are quite good. Uh, most of them are consumer oriented. Um, but what's interesting is that wearable technology, even though it feels like a very current trend, and I, and I think it is, it's not new, right? Wearable technology has been around for a long time. Here's a picture of a calculator watch from 1977. This is from HP, and in fact, I think it was designed to do algebra. There's a little stylus on the wristband. But, um, you know, certainly it's been around for a long, long time, and I'm sure there's many, many other examples before that. But yet today, I mean, wearable technology feels like, and, and I'm, definitely is a current trend. Um, let me just ask the audience, how many people have wearable devices? Show of hands. N not counting uh, smartphones. I know, I know you can wear those in your pockets, but outside of smartphones. Um, okay, so we have more, more than a few. Not everyone. Well, as a matter of fact, PricewaterhouseCoopers did a study on the penetration of wearable devices. 21% of American adults have a wearable device. That's a huge number, Tr tremendous penetration. In fact, if you compare it to tablet penetration just two years ago, tablets were also at 20%. And today they're at 40%. Um, and, and many, many people believe that wearables are gonna follow the exact same growth arc, maybe even faster. Um, I think another indication of wearables being, um, you know, even more than a trend is the crossover appeal. You, you saw this. This is a uh, picture uh, from Vogue magazine. And if you look at it, you can see the uh, woman there wearing Google Glass. We're going to talk about Google Glass, I think, in this session as part of the representative wearable technology. But um, anytime you get some kind of crossover appeal like this, very, very good indication that this is a trend and, and even a disruptive trend at that. In fact, um, another indication that, that we're dealing with a significant trend here is the idea that we actually introduce a new word to the vocabulary. Anybody hear glass hole before? <laughs> right? This was, um, I think this is an indication that we're dealing with disruption too, by the way. But you know, when Google brings glass out and people are wearing them around and, and they're getting banned from places in San Francisco and restrooms and the like, um, coming up with a term like this, clearly, clearly we're dealing with something that's uh, disruptive of nature. And um, since we're talking about uh, glass, probably most of you know or if you follow this at all, that uh, Google actually pulled it about a month ago. So it's kind of going back to the drawing board here. Um, but to me, I don't think this is an indication, anything to do at all with the trend. I mean, it's definitely here to stay. This is maybe more of an example of disruption. And also, I think in the case of Google Glass, um, really it's more of a reflection on the way this product was brought to market. Um, it, it, Google actually brought this as a prototype. It was part of a developer's program. And if you think about it, that's the way they bring software to market. You know, that it's not finished, they get it out there, uh, they open it up, they build a large community, they iterate on it, and then ultimately it gets perfected and then there's a built-in audience for it. That's a very, you know, typical, nice way to go to market for software. Doesn't work so well for a device like this, especially a device that has aims to be in Vogue magazine or things like that. There, there I think you do more of what Apple does, right? You, you, you build it behind closed doors, you perfect it, unveil it when it's fully ready. And um, I'm pretty sure that's what Google's going to do with this. The other thing is, and this is kind of the theme for today, I think they're going to adapt it or make it much more friendly to the enterprise. 
And so, yeah, so today's theme is, um, it's not just called disruption, period. It's disruption, create, or adapt. So really that means, you know, what are we gonna do about this? So hopefully you're with me now that wearable technology is a trend, it's a disruptive trend, but what's the opportunity? And, and most of the applications to date have been in the consumer space, but uh, we believe the opportunity is really in the, in the workplace. Why do we believe that? Well, uh, many, many reasons. I mean, that PwC study earlier uh, looked at the CIOs, and it's top of mind for CIOs right now. 77% all said that wearable technology will have a very significant impact in driving efficiencies and lowering costs. Um, you also have a lot of research and um, academics and consultants. They're actually trying to measure and quantify the efficiencies. Uh, as a matter of fact, London, uh, University of London is not only trying to quantify the efficiencies, they're trying to also quantify worker satisfaction and job enrichment. Um, but it's not just academics. I mean, companies today are actively deploying wearable solutions. Um, some examples in the warehouse. In fact, we're going to show you that in a minute. Um, you see it in field service technicians, right? So let's say for glasses, an example, they're out there trying to diagnose a problem. They can, while their hands are free, call up a video, maybe get some insulation guys or product information. They're actually doing that today. You see it in um, education, you see it in healthcare, you see it in entertainment, law enforcement, all already adopting wearable applications. Retail, very big into it. They're trying to um, bring the in-store experience and, and get people to um, purchase while they're in the store and maybe not while, while they're going home and back online. Um, and, and don't forget about advertising. In fact, this is a huge, huge area of interest for advertising. Why? Well, I mean, advertisers look at screens as incremental advertising opportunities, and, and the PwC study is projecting 130 million wearable device units in, by 2018. So that's 130 million new screens for advertising opportunities. I don't, I don't know how everybody feels about that, but um, definitely it's an indication that uh, there's opportunity in the workplace. Um, and I have Nigel Brady here, the software engineer. He actually developed an integration using wearable technology, and we're going to show that to you right now. So here's some background. Let's meet Wayne, the warehouse manager. Now, warehousing is something that's been around for a while, since before and after the internet age. And Wayne has a lot of responsibility. Not only does he have to come, not only does he have to receive shipments and actually send shipments out, he has to make sure his inventory system is up to date with what's actually sitting in his warehouse. Now Wayne, as you can see here, he's a pretty active guy. He's wearing a hard hat. He's holding boxes, driving forklifts, so traditionally warehouse managers have to fiddle around with scanner guns to keep track of inventory. Obviously that's not very convenient. So let's make Wayne's life easier with a wearable solution. So the first thing Wayne wants to do is Wayne is holding a box, like you can see in the lower left. He wants to know more about what's in the box. So we created a wearable solution to do that, and the wearable we're using is Google Glass. So we're going to drive it with our voice. Okay, Glass, manage inventory. So that brings up the Google Glass camera. Everybody can see themselves in the audience now. What we're going to do is we're going to look at the code on that box to actually see what's in it. So let's take a look. Now Glass is actually contacting the inventory system. And what you can now you can see the item that we scanned was a red touring bike. What you can actually hear right now is Glass is reading that information to me. So we have 5,700 items across all our warehouses. Let's drill down into more detail. So in this location, we can see the warehouse B1 has 60 items. Perhaps Wayne has to order more in the future. We could also see the distance from the item, and that's to, and that's to the use of indoor location technology. So Glass can, Glass can not only tell you how many items you have in your warehouse, but how close you are so Wayne doesn't get lost inside his own warehouse. So that's pretty useful in itself. But a cooler thing to do would be not only to see what's in the warehouse, but to actually fix what's in the system. 
And we have another last application that takes care of that. So the process of reconciling items in the warehouse is called cycle count. So we're going to use another voice command. OK, last. Inventory cycle count. Again, we need to look at the code for the item we need to update. So Glass is reaching out to the inventory system. And now uh, we need to, we've pulled information for a red mountain bike. Now let's take a look at this warehouse, A1. It says that there are 50 items here, but Wayne is standing in the warehouse, and there's 60 items. Obviously, that needs to be fixed. So the cool thing is that we can fix this right from Google Glass. OK, Glass, update cycle count. 60. So Glass actually listened to my voice as I dictated the new quantity, and that change is being pushed to the inventory system. Now, when we reload information for that warehouse, we see that the quantity has been updated to 60 items. So we've demonstrated two useful use case scenarios, not only of viewing what's in the warehouse, but also updating and fixing errors. Why don't you tell us a little bit about what's happening behind the scenes there? Well, behind the scenes, this is a cool solution, but of course, nobody would use it if they had to tear out all of their existing technology. So what we did is we built this wearable solution on top of an existing inventory solution, the Oracle JD Edwards ERP system. So on top of these, the legacy system, we have Canon's enterprise imaging platform, and that handles communications between the Google Glass and the JD Edwards system. But the thing to note that is the individual components themselves aren't that important. For example, if you had PeopleSoft, you could use that. If you didn't want to use Google Glass and wanted to use a smartwatch, you could use that as well. The whole point is, with the minimum of effort, we took this disruptive technology, wearables, and applied it to our existing warehouse system and made Wayne's life easier. OK. Um, so let me just kind of bring this all back. But basically, you can, I'm sure you can recognize the benefits of not only this solution, but what wearable technology can do in the warehouse and manufacturing and field service techs. But I mean, I, clearly you're going to get efficiencies, you know, and that's going to lead to cost savings. I think there's a point to be made about worker safety in the warehouse. I mean, that, um, you know, having your hands free to be able to do your job is certainly going to enable that. Um, Enrichment, though, I think is really the, the, the story here because what you're really doing is you're taking a frontline worker in the warehouse, in this case Wayne, and you're, 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 you're empowering him, giving him more knowledge, more real-time knowledge about the overall operation. Um, the, the idea that Glass is, kind of, is, is capturing this information, it's feeding it back in, in this case, J.D. Evers, but whatever the system is, you, you've transferred a warehouse worker into a knowledge worker, and that's where you see innovation. That's where you can see real business value. Um, so, you know, t today's takeaway, wearable technology is definitely happening. It's not a fad. I mean, it's, a, it's a, not even a trend. It's, it's a way of doing business. It's a convergence of the big IT mega trends when you think of big data analytics. We're talking about mobile, social. Um, I think wearable or represents all of those things in a single device. Believe the opportunity, though, um, more in the workplace. And I think the takeaway is, as Nigel demonstrated, you can't just bring a new technology in and just replace everything out. Like when tablets came along, people didn't just throw away their desktop PC, throw away their notebooks. Notebooks over time, that might go that way. But you have to make the new, exciting new technology work with the existing systems. And um, that's, I think, the way that wearable technology will find its place in the workplace. Okay, thank you. Thank you.